strategist of J. Chanel Group, but her journey to success had several detours along the way. After earning a Bachelor of Science in Public Relations here at UF, she took corporate America by storm, becoming one of the youngest executives in her organization until things got stormy. Join us as we hear how success didn't equate to happiness and how YouTube helped her discover her true identity, sparked a career change, and ultimately built a successful branding business. Jasmine, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. So we're going to jump right into it. Can you tell us about the darkest night in your career? <laughs> the darkest night in my career probably had to be um, in a position I was held holding for a retail company. I was actually the youngest executive at that time. I had a team of about 60 people and I felt like I was letting my team down. Um, it was after work every day, I was going home stressed and I just couldn't figure out why I wasn't able to get results in that um, particular position. And what I found is that um, the leadership ability I had is very different from management ability. So jumping into that role being really young um, made a huge difference in the effectiveness I was able to have with my team. Can you tell us a little bit more about how leadership was different than management? Yeah, so when you're a leader, you're really just motivating and encouraging people um, to get behind a vision versus when you're managing a team, you're really driving for results and holding people accountable. So um, getting followers as a leader, it's all about charisma and motivation, whereas management is more so about accountability. Mm -hmm. And so I hadn't learned those accountability skills that were needed to really drive a team. And so I felt like I failed in that first corporate position right out of college. So after graduation, mm -hmm. like you said, you became the youngest executive mm -hmm. in corporate America. Many would consider that to be the American dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how would you describe, you mentioned a little bit about management mm -hmm. versus leadership. How mm -hmm. would you describe your tenure in corporate America. Yeah. So when I first got that job, I was super excited. I was baffled that the company actually believed in me to give me such a high position right out of school without much experience. Uh, but what I found is that I did all the steps that society told me to take. So I got really good grades in high school, was able to get into UF, maintain a high GPA, graduate with honors, um, and go straight into corporate America right outside of um, after graduation. And when I got there, I found that it wasn't anything like I thought like how I was trained in the classroom or how society had kind of trained me to see that particular role. And what I found is that I hit a ceiling. Um, my leadership ability could only take me so far. My intellect could only take me so far. So there were some other barriers there that I just wasn't able to be able to accomplish or overcome. Um, and so I found myself at a crossroads trying to decide, is this stressful job really what I want to do? Am I truly being true to myself by buying into this um, American dream? So what was the changing point, point mm -hmm. for you at that time? Yeah, I actually had a manager sit down and tell me that engaging and inspiring people was a weakness. And that was something ha that had been my gift most of my life. I had spent my time, even here on campus, inspiring, motivating people, getting people to buy into big vision, um, making some changes around campus. I was actually a part of a club called UF Help. And we used to go to low income daycares and volunteer and kind of encourage the kids there. And so encouraging and motivating people had been a very large part of my life and so sitting in this job in corporate America being put on performance for spending too much time engaging and motivating my team um, versus driving for execution um, felt almost inauthentic to me so I felt like I didn't know myself if I would have changed that one thing that that company was asking me to change and so um, that's when I decided that this isn't for me anymore and I should take some time off to reevaluate um, what I really wanted out of my career out of my life in general. And during that time off, how did you evaluate 
those things. So I was actually expecting my first child, and so that changes things <laughs> drastically. Um, I really sat down and thought about, okay, what do you really want, Jasmine? What do you want your life to look like five to 10 years from now? Do you want to be working this really stressful job that doesn't believe in your gifts, that's telling that your gift is actually a weakness? Or do you wanna be doing something that represents you and that's authentic to your voice and your purpose? Um, and so during that time, I really sat down and evaluated the pros and cons. Um, and the cons outweighed the pros. Like, yes, health benefits are important. Yes, a lofty salary and 401k is important. Um, but I think if you have to sacrifice so much of your own identity to gain those things, then maybe it's not an equal trade-off. And so that's what I was able to do during that time in evaluating everything. So did you know from the early part that communications mm -hmm. was going to be the foundation of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I always had a love of communication and even in that role, um, it started off as more of a community engagement role. And so that's why I really enjoyed it when I first got started. But as the career went on, if I wanted to climb the ladder, the role kind of shifted. And so I always knew communications was gonna be a part of um, me being able to operate in my corporate career, um, but it started to look different in every stage and every role, and it wasn't clear cut as I thought it was gonna be. So I had to kind of create an opportunity for myself instead. So you mentioned setting down, evaluating mm -hmm. what was really important, having right. this corporate America job. Mm -hmm. What gave you the courage to step away from that and yeah. to say, I'm gonna do my own thing? It was actually motherhood. Like I believe I owed it to my child that I was expecting, I owed it to my son to be a happy and healthy mother. And I knew if I returned to work after giving birth, I wasn't gonna have that opportunity. I was gonna be going back into a stressful um, environment, going back into you know stressful situations around performance and managing the team and things like that. And so really at that crossroads of motherhood and career is where I decided like, I want to be happy and fulfilled at all times and my career needs to be as much a part of that as everything else. And so motherhood really was that catalyst for me. So Jasmine, once you took the risk of mm -hmm. entrepreneurship mm -hmm. and that transition from corporate America to being self-employed, how did that affect you financially? So luckily for me, when I left corporate America, I actually had saved a lot. Um, I didn't upgrade my living situation. I didn't upgrade my expenses and take lofty vacations when I had that corporate salary. So I had saved about 50% of my income over that time. And so it gave me that cushion, that rainy day fund, that as I was making the mistakes as an entrepreneur, as I was figuring it out, I was able to kind of lean into that and actually use that to kind of support my dream when things weren't flowing. The cash flow wasn't as quick as I wanted it to be, but it did give me that cushion. So I always advise people when you're thinking of making a leap of faith like this or taking that, bis that big risk, make it a little bit calculated. Like we can take risk with them being calculated and kind of plan things out a little bit um, so that you're not um, struggling financially while you're trying to figure out your dream at the same time. Because it does cost money to, <laughs> to create a business and, you know, to fund your dream. Right. Mm -hmm. So at the time when things weren't flowing as uh -huh. you wanted them to be, did you feel like quitting at any point? Every other day <laughs> when I first started out, every other day was, okay, can I really do this? Especially with a child and you know trying to make it on my own and trying to figure out from that way, it was hard. But what I had used to encourage myself was that, okay, as an entrepreneur, you have to hunt and eat what you hunt, basically. And so it's up to you. There's no paycheck coming into your bank account on a regular basis, so you have to basically eat what you kill. And so I had to approach each time I felt down or things weren't going, I had to get creative. Okay, how can I get a new customer? today? How can I get in front of some people and get some more leads? What service or program should I be offering that I'm currently missing? That's a gap in the market that I can be a solution for. And that creativity, that openness for creativity allowed me to get back to my love of communication. It allowed me to get back to my true authentic self and say, huh, how can I help other people do this exact same thing? And how did you decide how to map that out, mm -hmm. the creativity part, mm -hmm. the, the procedure part? What's really good about being self-employed and not going to a job every day is that you find that you have more clarity 
in your thoughts when you don't have a boss over your shoulder or when you don't, aren't dealing with coworkers you don't like, you really have a lot more clarity. So I was able to map that out by creating a signature framework that I could teach other people to bring themselves online. So what I was doing almost subconsciously, um, turning on the camera on YouTube, going live on social media, all of those were things I was doing for fun. But what I found later if, is if I could package that as a signature framework where I could get any, any individual, like you get you the exact same results I'm doing the same thing that I just did that's the part I can sell so the framework is what you can sell that secret sauce that allows you to get other people results from something you're doing naturally that you can do in your sleep and so that's how I mapped it out as a business so was this your first attempt at entrepreneurship? Actually, it wasn't. Uh, my first attempt was in the fifth grade. I created a magazine um, called Peer Pressure Magazine. I only gave away one copy. I didn't even get to sell it. Um, but I gave away one copy to a friend and that was my first attempt. And then my second was actually a social media agency when I was still enrolled at UF. So I started helping nonprofits figure out how to build their brands on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter during that time. And it worked out okay for a little bit. I really just didn't know what I was doing so I wasn't invoicing people on time <laughs> things that I learned later on down the line so this was actually my third attempt at entrepreneurship so after two failed attempts at entrepreneurship what made this one different what made this one successful so after trying it those two times and realizing that it takes a lot more than just talent <laughs> and one big idea, a lot of people think that, oh, you just have this really bright idea. You can go make a million dollars off of it tomorrow. That's not the case. It, it requires a lot of patience. It requires a lot of risk taking. And then it requires you to understand that you have to learn to enjoy the process. And so especially in the social media society, um, people think the process is overnight. But really, you have to fall in love with the journey. And that's what I've been able to do, fall in love with that long long-term goal and work until I get to that place. And so a lot of times as I'm working with clients, helping them build their brand online, the first thing that they ask is, how do I get to 100,000 followers? And I have to tell them that doesn't equal out to actual dollars. Like you have to be adding value. You have to be engaging with your audience. There are specific things you have to do to actually make that equal dollars. So I always tell people, just focus on engagement. And so this time I was more focused on my customer. I was more focused on the value I was bringing and how I was engaging with my community so that when it was products and service for me to offer, they were ready and willing to buy for me um, and support my business. So when did you realize that coaching and personal branding mm -hmm. was what you wanted to do? So what I was discovering in my experience with um, working with the nonprofits and working with other small business owners is that even though I can help with their social media, even though I could help with their websites and their newsletters, if they didn't have a strategy in place that helped them understand their brand story and their mission statement, their value proposition, if they didn't understand those things, what I was doing on social media didn't help. And so I started to coach them specifically around personal brand strategy because what I found is that we as individuals we as people, we connect to another person, not a business or a logo. We connect to that individual. So when I help people um, get better and have more clarity around telling their story, it really helps them connect with their audience much better. And that converts to sales for them or donations for the nonprofits I work with. So what would you say is the main message for your company? Mm -hmm. The main message is tell your story, build your brand. So I really focus heavily on brand storytelling because everybody has a story. And so our story is meant to impact multiple people, but when we keep it inside, we don't tie it to our business, we don't tie it to the products or service we sell, we're really doing ourselves a disservice and society a disservice by not sharing that story that we have inside. That's gonna help people. And your brand also focuses on authenticity mm -hmm. and self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Were there ever any times in your mm -hmm. life where you did not have those mm -hmm. qualities? Yeah, when I landed my first job outside of graduating at UF, we are in this big pond of other overachievers. And so um, being around high achieving people all the time, you kind of feel like, okay, I got this, I know what I'm doing. And then being in corporate America, all that went away. Um, because I realized I did not know what I was doing. And so that natural confidence that I had leading up to that time from achieving well in high school, achieving well in college, kind of went away when I wasn't seeing those same results um, in corporate America. And so I kind of had to do some personal development work to build those skills um, back up, especially when they were being questioned all the time in boardrooms and meetings and presentations. I really had to do some mindset work around shifting that. 
And what exactly did, did that look like, the personal mm -hmm. development, the mindset? Yeah, so for me, it, it was a lot of self-esteem work. It was a lot of reading books and listening to podcasts, but also working with a coach myself. Um, what uh, business coaches really help you do is figure out a blueprint that works for you as an individual, helping you get out of your own way, um, getting some of those limiting beliefs out of the way so you're not limiting yourself before you get started. You meant, mentioned the struggle of being in corporate America mm -hmm. and not really being true to yourself. Mm -hmm. So how did you combat that? What did you do to save yourself or to, to keep mm -hmm. yourself? I actually picked up the camera. Um, I started a YouTube channel and I just started documenting my journey of becoming a new mom, of trying to navigate corporate America because I believe I cannot be the only one experiencing this, um, being shocked at how you know the corporate game played out. And so in turning on the camera, I realized that I wasn't alone and I was able to use my authentic voice there and you know show up as my authentic self and motivate and engage with people, but also to see that they're experiencing the same things that I was. Um, and that was able to give me an avenue to be able to kind of use it as therapy, um, just sharing my story, getting it out there and getting the feedback from other people who are experiencing the same thing. And it actually turned into another stream of revenue for me um, from doing that because eventually I was able to get paid from uh, those YouTube views. Wow. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that you displayed your wedding on YouTube, yeah. <laughs> even childbirth. Yeah, on I'm YouTube. giving birth to both of my children on YouTube. <laughs> What was the overall reaction mm -hmm. of that from your audience? So my audience has gotten to grow up with me. And so that's the really, really fun part because they've been there since I was about, I think I was 22 when I first picked up the camera. So from 22 now to almost 30, so almost eight years, my audience has watched me grow up. They've evolved with me. Um, they watched us give birth. They watched us walk down the aisle. They watched us plan a debt-free wedding and honeymoon. And so it's really been empowering my audience to see that you can be a millennial with all the student loan debt who um, bought into the American dream, who failed at corporate America, who failed at a few businesses, but you can still figure it out and that there's um, a part of our journey that everybody's experience, experiencing pieces of that. And so now the fun part is they get to see me, watch, they get to watch me um, actually raise my baby, my newborn home while running the business um, with a kindergartner and learning how to be a new wife all at the same time. So it's always an exciting um, thing for them to see. And how did your family respond to being <laughs> documented along right. with you on this journey? Yeah. So of course the kids didn't have a choice. They were <laughs> they were on there. At first my husband was a little leery about putting um, all of our business out, but we really tried to make sure we keep the private moments private mm -hmm. um, and that we don't show the kids school or anything like that. But as time went on, they got used to it, used to the camera being there at cookouts and birthday parties and just engaging with people because they know it's for our greater good. Um, that is helping other people see that there's other options out there and your life can play out and you can evolve with it. And so they get to see me make mistakes too. I don't just show the pretty parts. I show, you know, when we have to downsize. I show when we had to start budgeting better to be able to save for a debt-free wedding. I show now that we're making a transition and moving to another city. So they get to see all the fun and highs and lows <laughs> of my life on there. So Jasmine, it seems like it would be difficult to balance life career. <laughs> How do you do it? How do you separate the two? Yeah, especially so because we're so visible online, we really try to have really clear boundaries around protecting the privacy of the children uh, first. So balancing, I'm always pulling out the camera so they know the camera's gonna come out. But what I've tried to do is make sure we're already gone from that location before I post the video. Um, I usually don't show where we're staying and things like that. So I really try to be conscious of not oversharing, but giving my audience enough so they feel like they're a part of the journey. And what do you do personally? You mentioned having support from family and mm -hmm. your spouse. Mm -hmm. What do you do personally to stay connected to yourself? So I have self-care days on my calendar because I learned in that first couple of years of motherhood that you will begin to get burnt out, especially when you're balancing a business at the same time. And so I had to schedule self-care for me to have it. So every Thursday I take the day off, I'll either go get my nails done, go to lunch with friends or do something that day to not focus on the business, not focus on the family, but just to solely focus on me. A lot of your messaging for your brand is empowering women mm -hmm. and inspiring them. Mm -hmm. Who do you look to for inspiration? That's a really good question. <laughs> so I'm gonna say my mom. 
<laughs> because we have to say that answer. But I also have some really big powerhouse women who are in my circle that I get to learn from. So um, one of my really great bosses at a corporate job, I'm still connected with her. I get to work with her as a freelancer. And so I get to see how she does business, how she collaborates um, with other individuals. I also have some mentors from afar who are online who I've been able to connect with as, as well and check in. And then I also have coaches and mentors who provide me some strategies to continually to scale my business, to continue to take care of myself, and then also trying to figure out how to make those things work in harmony. So you have rewritten the American dream. Yes. <laughs> you seem to have it all. Mm -hmm. Husband, mm -hmm. children, family, mm -hmm. career. What's next for you? <laughs> <laughs> The next big thing is just figuring out how to help more women achieve this for themselves. Like my new mission is to help 100 women make their first $1,000 online. Because what I found is that we talk ourselves out of our dreams. We talk ourselves out of our visions and we don't think we can have those things once we become a wife or even in, when you're a college student, you think, oh, I can't have that because I have to focus on school right now. Um, but the truth is you can have pretty much all of it. You just have to learn how to balance it. And so my goal now is to teach as many women as possible how to turn their gifts and talents into a brand story that they can use to attract that tribe that's gonna um, purchase their products and services and teaching them how to do it with confidence as it relates to their purpose as well. So I'm excited about it. Um, as many people as I can help on this journey, that's, that's my mission. What was the hardest part of reaching success? I think it's really cliche to say, but it's truly believing in yourself. <laughs> like, I know that's an answer that most people don't want to hear or they think it's too simple, but really when you're um, on a level to success, on the journey to success, a lot of times we follow this path. Like I said, I followed the society's path that told me where I was going to end up. And the result wasn't what I expected. And so when you're following this recipe card that somebody else is creating, you can't determine exactly what the destination is going to be. And so by believing in my own inner voice, believing in my own intellect, believing in, okay, I have having faith in myself that, okay, I can actually achieve these things that really allowed me to chart the path myself and make it look exactly how I want it to look. And so the hardest part is really believing that I could do that, like having the audacity <laughs> to believe that people can pay me for teaching them how to show up online. Um, women can pay me to teach them how to believe in themselves and you know leverage their confidence to build an online brand. So it's really, really important to push past those fears, get those self-doubts out of the way, get those limiting beliefs out of the way and really begin to chart the path for yourself. And it's obvious you are doing that. You mm -hmm. mentioned the next campaign for you mm -hmm. is helping 100 women mm -hmm. build $1,000 Yeah, make their online. first $1,000 online. What's mm -hmm. been the response? It has been an overwhelming response. And so that's the other thing about walking in your gifts. You don't know, you know who's waiting for that thing, that idea that you have. You don't know who's waiting for it until you release it, until you say it <laughs> out loud to a couple people. And so I had been holding on to that idea for a really long time thinking, oh, it's not the right time or who am I to say that I can help you make your first thousand dollars online by building your brand and once I put it out there people are like this is exactly what I need like I'm trying to get out of my own way I just can't figure it out I'm trying to balance you know build a business and I'm at home with these kids and I can't figure it out and so the response has been great and I have been excited I'm in my first cohort right now I have 12 ladies that I'm helping and it has been exciting to watch their ideas come to life and watch them put themselves out there Jasmine let's go back to that darkest night in your career, what advice would you give yourself during that time? I would tell myself that you already have exactly what you need to succeed in life outside of this job, outside of any other choices. Um, you just have to get back to the things that you're naturally gifted at and believe in those things, regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what a boss is telling you or what response you're getting from your employees, you have exactly what you need and it's meant to serve someone. Maybe this is not the place um, for it to work, but find that place, keep pushing until you find that place where you can walk in that gift. We've talked about Jasmine's YouTube videos and now we wanna show you a clip from one of them. Take a look.
we got daddy a father's day present mommy got it in the car i'm gonna give it to you and you're gonna walk in and give it to him and tell him happy father's day can okay? i see which time plus yeah. father's day yeah but i'm telling you what you got to do okay okay you ready for the mission what are you supposed to say? Happy Father's Day! <laughs> <laughs> you alright, bud? Yeah, but it's too... Oh, it's real! This ain't real. Look at this. Happy Father's Day! Open the bag! Happy Father's Day! Happy Father's Day! Happy Father's Day! Open it! Look, Shrey, open it for you! Shrey, open it! Really, Shrey? Open it! Jasmine, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. That's all of our time for now. We thank you for joining us. Until next time, good night.